Autism is a social malady that has become a clot in the wheel of progress of every society. Nigeria is not left out in this act of courtesy that has resulted into bringing this and has also affected the society in all of education. And that is why today the owner flies a noise to bring to the fore of our discussion this week. Corbyn is put a courtesy in the society, the role of stakeholders. Of course, all stakeholders have a role to play in turn the tide of courtesy in our society. My guests are in the studio with me. Uh, let me introduce first and foremost the local state chairman of the Nigeria National Youth Council of Nigeria, the person of Comrade Abu Jabari, Ayila Ami. You are welcome to the program. And you know that in the complete uh, house today, we have the youth leader in the state. I also have the political scientist. In a minute, he's a lecturer in the Department of Political Science, Federal College of Education, Abe Okuta, Dr. Simon Utumala. Thank you very much. And good afternoon, our viewers. So, this discourse may not be complete without injecting the security angle to the subject matter. And that is why we have brought the Ogu State PRO of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps. Mr. Oguna Yekai, you are welcome, sir. Good afternoon, my viewers. It's my pleasure to be here. All right, let's start the world with And to start with, uh, there is no problem without the cause. And when you know the cause, then you begin to think of the solution to the problem. Let me start my discussion with Dr. Simon Kutumala. Common courtesy in our society, the role of stakeholders. Let's take a look at the genesis of this problem in the society. Do we look at what brought about courtesy? Do we look at who, who and who brought about courtesy in the society that has now blossomed to what we have today? Thank you very much, uh, Uncle, and our viewers at home. Now, there are no events without history. And the historical antecedent of what, it become, what has become of cultism today is a common knowledge. But when it started, it didn't start like this. The causes, the reason why it started in the first place, who started it, where did it start from? Now, as far back as the 1950s, at the famous University of Ibadan, the subject of cultism and the movement that was known as the Magnificent, Magnificent Seven was started by our very revered Professor Rene Shoyinka. And the idea was to bring people of like minds. And they formed what is today known as the pirates, the confraternity pirates. And their idea was to pursue a common agenda to address common interests that will serve the purpose and the good of their members within the university community. And since then till date, we've had groups that had metamorphosized from the former uh, pirates and with terrible agenda outside the norm, outside the agenda of the founding fathers. It was a laudable group in the 50s. It was a group that meets in the public. It was a group that has the interest, first and foremost, of students at heart. Students that were not classified as the elites of those days. But the rest, they say in history. <laughs> that is how we are here. That is why we are here now. Thank you very much, Dr. Tuba. I think Thank you have given us the foundation of the subject matter. Yes, now sir. that we know that the, the root of uh, cousin today started in the 50s in the UI with a common agenda to fight oppression, yes, if I may get you right. Now uh, it has metamorphosed. We have over 100 court groups in Nigeria today. Uh, let me now throw my question to the chairman of uh, the state chapter of the National Youth Council, uh, Comrade Abdul Jabbar Ayila Agbe, you are a youth leader. Now we have over 100 court groups in Nigeria today. What do you think has brought about the increase in number of this group? That is the number one question. Number two, do you mean that the youth have now shifted their attention to that area of courtism? 
rather than other areas that can benefit the society better. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, let me uh, corroborate the, the basic or, that, or the background that has been set by a uh, doctor. Um, at the initial stage, when these uh, groups were formed, the intention was one, to protect the rights of the students, as I've been highlighted by a doctor, and two, was you will note, you, you, you will note that that period was a pre independent period of most African countries. And the nationalists outside were fighting for uh, independence of African states. Mm. Those of our, uh, uh, those students there in the university system also think of ways by which they too can contribute in their own quota, one in protecting the right and interest of the, their youth, the student constituency within the school, and again to find a platform through which they too can fight for nationalism from within the campus. And of course, like um, you have rightly said, uh, or, uh, and Dr. alluded to it, it has snowballed into uh, big shape today. Now to the question, why, okay, you said we have over 100 today, why did it grow to that extent? Now, we would not, that will take us back to why people are joining it today. Why they are joining it today? So let's take a look at that. Yeah. Why they are joining it today was, um, of course, there is peer growth in France. Um, of course, there is uh, this idea of uh, big manism or, or, or the spirit of I want to belong on campus because of the belief that when you belong to that group, oh, you have arrived within the campus. So from there, and of course, there is this uh, thing about um, our people, this, everybody wants to be leader. When at least they belong to one group and they see that, oh, maybe even within the group there is a kind of cheating, there is this, there is that, people, to, that one, two, three, group of three, two. They think they want to fight uh, for oppression. Yes, to, oppression. to avenge other people uh, against uh, their members. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything put together. Hmm. On their own, too. They will go and form their own little group, too, just to, well, abandon this, do this, do that. And so that is how it continues to grow. Hmm. All right, thank you very much, and let me now go back to the PRO of NSCDC in Ogo State. This, of course, is a serious issue, very sensitive for that matter. Now, as these groups grow, they and they, uh, do, do you think that our security agencies are not really doing enough? Because if they do, it will not uh, be growing every day, multiplying in number on a daily basis. Uh, don't you think the security agencies have a lot of roles to play? in this balance? Of course, uh, the security agencies uh, are doing what they are supposed to do to also bring down the increase mm -hmm. in the number of uh, court groups. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me also corroborate to what the doctor and my comrade had said. Two other reasons that I feel also contributes to the increase in the number of court groups is of course uh, mentorship mm. and uh, continuous recruitment. Mm. Uh, aside from having mentorship from people in terms of good uh, things, even those things that we feel are social malice within mm. our society, they also have people that also mentor them. Mm. So that is another area. But like I said earlier, there, there, there are a lot of things that are also just beyond security agencies alone. Mm -hmm. uh, information gathering also is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And that is not only in terms of gadgets or any other equipment. It also matters in terms of information that people are ready to volunteer to security mm -hmm. agencies. And to give out to them. To give out to them. Mm -hmm. That will really help us to water down the increment in the number of court group or the love for involvement mm. in joining that will really help us to bring it down if we don't really have that mm. the efforts of security agencies may not also manifest that quickly 
-hmm. It will seem as if uh, we are not really doing anything. And that is why we have that so glad that uh, security is actually everybody's it's business. business. Mm -hmm. Security is everybody's business, covering the spirit of courtism in the society. The role of stakeholders is the topic of discussion on your image today. And as you can see, I have uh, people who know their onions who are capable of discussing this issue. Um, of course, you have right to contribute to the program on the number that will be displayed on your television screen. You can watch us live on DSTV 260, of course, on uh, GoTV 100 and Star Time 113. On OGTV is Channel 25. So please, let's, of course, uh, let the conversation begin from there. Uh, let me go back to Dr. Otumala. Now, there is a problem on ground. It is established, and we know that there is a problem. From the academia, what, what, what are you people doing to really give them the, the, the expected enlightenment, the orientation from school? Because everything starts from there. So though some people say that charity begins from home, but when it, it, being, it begins from home, then it is sustained in tertiary institutions where these students attend. So what is the role of lecturers? Thank you, sir. Now, we must say that the menace of courtism is in two folds. Mm. One that happened inside the institution and the other outside. We must not shy away from the fact that the challenge or the problem posed by courtism is both external and internal. Mm. And internal, the responsibility of the teachers or the lecturers has always been to inculcate or pass into the student what is ideal. Mm. Now, if when dealing with the one that is internal to us, the challenge posed by the external uh, aspect of courtism remains with the immediate society and causing further problem to those of for those of us inside the system. Mm. Now, our responsibility over time still remains that we have a role to teach the students what is ideal. Mm. Now, but we must not shy away also from the fact that these children or the, our students, while coming from home, mm. they also have the family aspect of the whole of this problem. Coming from home with uh, a whole lot of um, character deficiencies, mm. character deficiencies from the home. The first place of learning before you even get to school is the home, is your immediate environment, your peer group. Now, when they bring those things, we have not left our part of teaching the ideals, mm. of teaching what is right, of teaching and inculcating what is fundamental to developing our society. We have taken that responsibility as primary to us. That is why you discover that for a student to, be, to become a graduate, it must be found worthy in character and learning. So the responsibility of the lecturer or the teacher within the school system is to help the child become worthy in character mm -hmm. so that what is learned will be able to affect the society positively. We have taken that. Mm -hmm. We have taken that. It is not just teaching uh, economics or mathematics, as the case may be. It is also building an individual that is society worthy, mm -hmm. an individual that is responsibility compliant, an individual that is able to address the challenge of the 21st century. That is what the lecturers are doing. And I can also tell you that that we are doing from the heart of our heart. Mm. All right, F from, from the gown to the town now, let me go to uh, Comrade Abdijabara, you like me. Now, we have, we have left the tertiary institution. Now, let's come back to your people. You are a leader, a youth leader for that matter. What is the role of your association? Uh, because uh, when, when they are talking about uh, somebody being a youth leader, that means you are a leader over millions of youth, especially from your constituency. Do you have any program that you put uh, together in order to sensitize your members? Because there is no way uh, that some of these youth, of course, they are your members. If you, if, if you have to really look at the arithmetic of this uh, uh, issue that we are treating. Well, thank you very much. Um, on our part, as a, a youth, a leaders of youth constituency in the state, um, of course, the major role that we can play to stem the tide of this constituency is sensitization. 
mm. of our members. And of course, we are doing that from time to time. Mm. Um, I need to add that it is what it is the product of whatever we have from the family level that we are going to build on. And that is why we always encourage that our parents from home should begin to give our colleagues, the young ones, a sound moral and education from home. It, when they have, when our youth have sound moral education from home, it is that um, uh, uh, education they have uh, gotten from their families that we will consolidate, that we will build on. Uh, so, by, by building on it, by giving them a uh, sound uh, sensitization uh, program uh, from time to time, definitely all of us will, will, will now come to the table to be uh, the better youth that all of us want to see. Everybody in any part of society, or parent, or whatever stakeholder, want to see that kind of individual, want mm -hmm. to relate, want to identify with that particular individual that is, uh, um, th that is positive. Let, mm -hmm. let me just use it. Uh, let me just use that, uh, that adjective. Okay. That is positive, that is, um, that everybody wants to see, wants to relate with. Nobody wants to identify with uh, someone. A that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to identify with a failure. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to identify with someone, somebody of, uh, of, of, of bad character. Of, of good character. Okay. Everybody wants okay. to relate okay. to okay. people of good, good character. So on our part, as a youth organization, as a, the, the leader of mm. the youth constituency, we, from time to time, we are doing a lot of sensitization program that uh, change, that, that build confidence, that build self-esteem mm. in our youth so that they can see the good side mm. of life. That, okay. oh, when you do this, when you do this, right. these are things, and when you uphold this, so these are uh, uh, all right, thank you very much. Let, let me throw uh, one more question to the PR of NSCDC. Now, as a, a security organization, is there any unit in your organization that actually uh, takes a cursory look at uh, courtesy? Is there a unit that um, is there to discharge the responsibility on courtesy or to stem the tide of, uh, tide of courtesy in, in, in the society? Let me also answer this way that uh, I'm very sure for all security agencies, there is no one that is limited to making uh, arrests or corrections as regards uh, issues of courtism, even though it might be tilted to one agency mm -hmm. than, than the other. others. But for my agency, we actually have two key departments. We have the counter-terrorist units, which can make arrests. Then we also have the peace and conflict resolution unit mm -hmm. that will also, uh, from the peace angle, mm -hmm. uh, try to find a better person in that person that was arrested for issues of courtism so that we can also actually correct and then refurbish that person to be a better person. Uh, this is what the society uh, has brought to, to that person mm -hmm. uh, because he, is actually, he or she will actually be from a home mm -hmm. and uh, for security agencies we cannot shift blame again to anybody than to get that situation arrested and make it corrected. Mm -hmm. So with the counter-terrorist unit and the peace and conflict resolution unit, we can actually do our own duty from the angle of the Nigerian security and civil defense corps. Well, uh, time is fast spent, but not without um, takeaways from my guests before we round off. Uh, Comrade Abjabar, are you like, we take away from people that are watching us. Oh? Well, uh, to our youth out there, um, you are who you are, hmm. and you are uh, the reflection of, you are microscopic reflection of our society. If you are a good youth, if you are a good child, for your parents, if you are a good youth, that is what people will see about our society. Mm -hmm. So be who you are, have that confidence in you, abhor any act of subverting the due process of law, be law abiding, um, as it, and with that will be that very good, that youth that will be um, okay. a mirror. Of, of the society. society that I want to see. Okay, Dr. Tumala, a quick one as a teacher. Quick one, please. To build a society that is functional, that is productive, we need everybody, especially the youth, 
to be up and doing and be a positive-minded individual. All, all, all right. And uh, finally, from uh, Mr. Bunya Dyke. Let me pick you from the population angle. My commandant, Commandant Amid Abode, will say, public relation is not who you say you are. Mm. It's what people say you, you are. are. So as uh, youth, we should be a reflection of what people should say in us. All right, this is where we round off this week. I'm sure we'll continue with this topic next week. God willing, coming the spirit of courtesy in the society, the role of stakeholders. I want to say a very big thank you to uh, Comrade Abdul Jabbar Ayinla Agbe, State Chairman, National Youth Council of Nigeria. Thank you very much. I hope you join us next week again. And of course, uh, Dr. Simon Utumala, thank you very much thank for you very being much, part sir. of the discussion. And uh, Mr. Abuina Daik, the PR of NSCDC, you know, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Until we meet next week, God willing, let us be whom you are and let us be good reflection of our society. God bless us. This is to inform the general public that the Ogun State Government has observed that some vehicles are fond of using government and official number plates on their private vehicles. This act is wrong and worrisome. It contravenes the policy of the Ogun State Government on the use of government official number plates. All accounted officers of ministries, departments and agencies are enjoined to furnish the office of the head of service with details of official vehicles bearing government and official number plates for record purpose. In order to streamline this practice, the approval must be obtained for allocation of vehicles number plate from the office of the head of service. Henceforth, the law enforcement officers have been directed to apprehend private vehicles that are affixed with government or official number plates. A word is enough for the wise. Mm -hmm.